I was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Kind of an interesting location for this video here in the North Atlantic. But uh, I'm going to talk about how many people exactly die in the time of Jacob's trouble in the book of Revelation. Um, I've made a mistake in the past of saying about half the world's population dies. And uh, I've made that statement based on how I was taught. And what I heard over the years going to church buildings and, and you know, being part of organized religion. And I always just heard this thing, half the world's population is going to die. And the uh, Lord really kind of prompted me here recently, do the study yourself. Instead of just relying on the words of men, actually pick up your King James Bible and do the word study yourself. Okay? So I'm going to show you here what the Lord showed me. You can go in your King James Bible to the book of Revelation. Book of Revelation chapter 2. We're going to go through the book of Revelation, not verse by verse, obviously. I have a whole series of studies on that. Uh, Revelation for Bible-believing Christians, where we go through and we get uh, instruction and in righteousness for a Christian today. But uh, this study, the purpose of this, is to go through and see exactly what the Bible says about how many people die in this future time period. And I'm doing this not because I get some kind of a sick pleasure out of it, but because I want to try to warn people. Uh, there's some really bad times coming, and you don't have to be a Christian to understand that. You can look at the world scene right now, and you can see all the wars and rumors of wars and everything else, and, and people would say climate change and whatever, and you can debate that back and forth. The point is, uh, there's some really bad stuff coming to this earth. What does the book of Revelation say? How many people exactly does it say will die in this time period? Revelation chapter 2, verse 10 says... Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Okay, he's talking about saved people. Um, how many people die? doesn't say. It doesn't specify. You see people die there. They're faithful unto death. But it doesn't say how many people die. Okay? So again, if you're a scholar, you're a Bible scholar, you can go to this passage and you can, you can say... You can do this study yourself and say, you know, uh, how many people die in this time? Well, the Bible doesn't really specify right there. Next, we're going to go to Revelation chapter 2, verse 23. And it says, I And I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and hearts, and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. Again, you see death. But is there a number specified? No, there's no number specified. I'm going to show you, actually, that there's only three times in the book of Revelation where there is a number specified in connection with death. All right? And it doesn't add up to half the world's population. Hmm. Revelation chapter 6, verse 2. Here you get into the seal judgments. Revelation chapter 6, verse 2. Pretty windy out here today. Um, Revelation 6, verse 2. Of course, you're by, you know, when you're by the sea, it's usually pretty windy. Um, and I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. Now, of course, the Antichrist going out conquering is going to result in some death. But is there a number given? No. There is no number given of how many people are going to be killed in that time, of his war that he brings. Go down to verse 4. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. Again, we see killing, war, death. But is there a number? No. Verse 6. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny, and see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. Famine, in other words. Um, but is there a number given? You say, well, some might not die of the famine. Okay, I'll grant you that. But uh, some will. There would be weak and elderly people and sickly and whatever. You know, They're going to die as a result of famine. Young children and things. If there's children that have been born and things after the catching up. Because um, I do believe that young children will be leaving at the catching up before this whole time starts. But uh, I've done studies on that. But the whole point is, again, there's no number given. Verse 8, And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was Death, and Hell followed with him, and power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beasts of the earth. 
Okay, fourth, but uh, okay, looking at my notes here. Um, now notice, okay, this would be one place where there is a number associated. It says, power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth. Now, can you take that fourth part of the earth and say that that's a fourth part of the people that get killed? No. It could actually be more than a fourth of the people that are killed. All right? We don't know. I mean, if you pick this place here as a fourth part of the earth, there's not very many people here. All right? Uh, if you pick big major cities and include that in the fourth part of the earth, it would be a huge number of people that could get killed. Again, you can't make a specific argument off of Revelation chapter 6, verse 8. It says a fourth part of the earth, but it doesn't say that it's a fourth part of the people that are killed. And depending, like I said, depending where that fourth part is, it might not be that many people. Or it could be huge, a lot more than a fourth part of the earth. Interesting. Revelation chapter 6, verses 9 through 11. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. So again, you see martyrs being killed there. Is there any number given? No. Again, no number given of these martyrs that are killed. Revelation chapter 7, verse 9. And I beheld, and lo, a great multitude which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. Okay, now they're up there. And how'd they get there? Look at verse 13. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, what are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Okay, they were killed. Again, this is martyrs. Is there a number? Well, a number which no man could number, great multitude, verse 9. But is there a specific number given? No. No. Where is this whole thing coming from, brethren? Half the world's population gets killed in the time of Jacob's trouble. Uh, Revelation chapter 8, verse 9. Okay, and the third part of the creatures which were in the sea, like behind me, and had life died, and the third part of the ships were destroyed. All right? That's going to be pretty rough out there in the time of Jacob's trouble. Um, but that's a, short, a third part of the ships and the creatures. It doesn't say anything about man. Look at verse 11, Revelation chapter 8, verse 11. And the name of the star is called Wormwood, and the third part of the waters became Wormwood, and many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. All right, many men, no number given. Again, we see it again there. A great number of people are dying, but there's no specific number given. This is very challenging right now with this wind out here. But what good is preaching if there's no challenge to it? Revelation chapter 9, verse 6. And in those, men, in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. Okay, so they're tormented, but there's no death. Interesting. Now, here we get into one of the actual numbers. Revelation chapter 9, verse 15 through 18. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour, and a day, and a month, and a year, for to slay the third part of men. God has everything timed out. Don't worry. And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 thousand, and I heard the number of them. In other words, 200 million. And thus I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them, having breastplates of fire, and of jacinth, and brimstone. And the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions, and out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. Now look at this, verse 18. By these three were the th was the third part of men killed by the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone, which issued out of their mouths. So there we do see a number given of people that die. A third part of men. All right? Third part of men killed, it says. All right, so you say, okay, well, there's 7 billion people. And uh, in the world today, a little over 7 billion, I guess. Not sure the actual number changes all the time, obviously. So there's 7 billion people, so a third part of that, and you kind of figured 
But here's the problem. There's a lot of other things that are happening along with that judgment and before that judgment. So what's the third part of men that are killed? We have no idea. I don't think it's going to be 7 billion people by the time that judgment hits. Very interesting. Very interesting. Now I'm going to show you the verse that ties everything all together. That gives you the actual number of how horrific this time period is going to be. Revelation chapter 11, verses 5 through 6. It says here, And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth, and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. These have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and have power over waters to turn them to blood, and to smite the earth with all plagues, as often as they will. Okay? So again, we see the two witnesses are killing the wicked, certainly. Um, but is there a number given? No number given. All right. Now go to Revelation chapter 11, verse 13. And the same hour was there a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell, and in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand, and the remnant were affrighted, and gave glory to the God of heaven. Okay, now, here you go. We see an actual number. Seven thousand. The third part of men, yeah, you can kind of get an idea there, but you don't really know what the starting number was. Here you see it's actually seven thousand men die in this earthquake. So, there is a number given there. 7,000. That's a pretty good number of people to die in an earthquake. All right. It's going to be pretty tragic in that time period. But does that equal half of the world's population? No, it doesn't. Revelation chapter 11, verse 18. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come in the time of the, de of the dead, that they should be judged, and that, they shouldest, that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. Okay, all the people that pollute and corrupt and everything else, and rape the planet to, for gain, be it in logging or in uh, gas and oil and whatever else, uh, whatever the uh, big money people do uh, to steal and destroy God's planet, you know, and whatever. Uh, God's going to destroy them in this time period coming up. But is there a number given? No, there isn't. Revelation chapter 12, verse 17. Uh, and the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Now, of course, obviously, here this, the woman in Revelation chapter 12 is Israel, um, very clearly Israel. It's not Mary, sorry, to the Catholics. It is Israel. And the dragon goes and he makes war with the remnant of her seed. And he kills them. Kills a bunch of them. You know where I'm going, don't you? But there's no number given. You know what I mean? Revelation chapter 13, verse 7. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them, and power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. Okay, making war and he's overcoming them. But again, no number. Revelation chapter 13, verse 15. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, and the, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. How many people are going to reject the mark of the beast in the future? Well, we have no idea. But if they do, they're going to be killed. They're going to be martyred. See, the book of Revelation is not chronological. It isn't just play-by-play -play event. It's, there's a lot of overlap. It's telling a thing, and then it goes back, and it retells it, and then more detail and more detail. Revelation chapter 6 is the whole time of Jacob's trouble. Don't let anybody lie to you and say, oh, it's all chronological. You get really messed up in the book of Revelation if you try to make the whole thing chronological. You have people being martyred here in Revelation chapter 13, but the martyrs are already in heaven back in chapter 6. What do you do with that? Well, you have to have a couple comings of Jesus. You know, he comes back at the end of Revelation chapter 6, and then it just kind of, the time of Jacob's trouble just keeps rolling right on. You know? Very sloppy way to read the Bible. Uh, Revelation chapter 14. Revelation chapter 14, verse... Uh, 19 through 20. And the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and cast it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. 
and the winepress was trodden without the city, and blood came out of the winepress, even under the horse bridles, by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. Okay. Is there a number? No. No number of those that are killed there. We have really no idea. Um, Revelation chapter 16. Uh, you can go down through there. The vile judgments don't say that anyone was killed, per se, uh, but you can certainly see, you know, men being scorched with great heat and, and a lot of the other things that are happening. Um, you can pretty much assume that there's going to be some people that are going to be dying, some casualties, in other words. Um, Revelation chapter 18. Oops. Went a little bit too far. Revelation 18. Verses 8 through 10. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her, when they shall see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come a very violent judgment that lasts only for one hour and there's death but there's no number finally Matthew or excuse me Revelation chapter 19 verse 19 through 21 the end of the time of Jacob's trouble Revelation 19 verse 19 through 21 and I saw the beasts and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army and the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. I believe that that's the 200 million man army that we read about earlier. But are they all there? Or is it still 200 million men? Well, it doesn't really say. But the whole point is there, that's the last mention of death in the time of Jacob's trouble. And again, there is no number given. So how on earth did these Bible scholars over years of study and things like this arrive at this number of half of the world's population will die in the time of Jacob's trouble? And yet you go through the book of Revelation, it doesn't say anything of the kind. If you take a third of men dying and a quarter, you know, you could say a quarter of the earth, but they'd take it and say, well, it's a quarter of men. It doesn't say that. And then 7,000, that's the only three numbers that are given. Well, you can arrive somewhere right around half, but that's not what the Bible's saying. And what about all the other judgments? You see? So then how do we arrive at the actual number? Well, you don't. There is no actual number. But the words of the Lord Jesus Christ tell us approximately how many people are going to be gone. Let's look at that. Revelation chapter 24. So simple. When you just look at it here, Revelation chapter 24, verse 21 and 22. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. There you have it. You say, well, I didn't see a number. Yeah, there is no number. Okay, but Jesus Christ, God manifest in the flesh, is there and he's saying, I'm going to have to supernaturally shorten the days or else nobody is going to survive. There should no flesh be saved. Um, I don't think that's half the world's population. That's a lot less than half the world's population. I'd say probably more like 90 to 95% of the world's population is going to be destroyed in the time of Jacob's trouble. That's why it's called a time of great tribulation. It's not called the great tribulation. It is the great tribulation is never given as a title. Always remember that. Burn that thing into your brain. It's not called the time uh, or the, the great tribulation. It's called the time of Jacob's trouble in Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 7 and also Daniel's 70th week back in the book of Daniel chapter 9. Never is it called the great tribulation in the King James Bible. I can't speak for the ones that come from the Vatican, the NIV, the NASV, whatever. Can't speak for those. ESV, all that junk. Okay, the King James Bible teaches that in this time period that's coming, 
the Lord is going out to supernaturally shorten those days so that there would be some people that are left alive. Some flesh would be saved. That's how bad it's going to get. And I'll tell you right now, I don't know if you're noticing this, if you're saved, but you go out in public and it's just, you can feel, it's kind of like a pot. You ever see a pot that has a lid on it and then there's water inside of it and it's, it's just about ready to boil over and the lid just kind of goes clink, 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 like that. It's just about ready to just, poof, just explode and the water just come out all over down over the stove and sizzle and fry and whatever. That's what I feel this world is like right now. It's just a powder keg just ready to go off. And what's it going to do? What's going to happen? It's going to blow up and a lot of people are going to die. A whole lot of people are going to die. It's peaceful. It's beautiful. God's in control. And God will be in control in the time of Jacob's trouble too, I might add. Uh, don't worry about the Illuminati and the Jesuits and the, and the nuclear war and all the other stuff and the weapons of mass destruction. Uh, God's going to cause all of it. Every single bit of it. Um, your only hope is Jesus Christ and a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. I didn't say your hope was going to church. I didn't say your hope was giving 10% to this ministry. I didn't say your hope was getting baptized or keeping the Ten Commandments. Your hope is a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ. That's your only hope. Because the body of Christ, those who are genuinely saved, and that number is very small, by the way. It's a lot smaller than most people think. There's a lot of people that talk about they're gonna, the rapture is coming and everything else, and I look into their testimony, I look into who they are, and I'm going, they're not even saved. They don't believe in the King James Bible. They believe in any version, anything goes. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever, the Bible says. You can't be saved and hate this book. No way. No possible way. And yet these people claim to be Christians. They hate the book. They do all kinds of stuff that does not appear in the King James Bible. And yet they still claim salvation. And they think that they're going to be taken up in the rapture. Uh, very few people are leaving. Okay? And let me just say this. If you want to see proof of God and physical proof, if you're an atheist and things, and you say, I want to see physical proof of this, you're going to see more than you could care for. Okay? More than you want coming in the future. When you hit that time of Jacob's trouble, it's going to be the most horrifying time period on earth. Jesus himself said, except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. It's going to be bad. More than 90%, I would say, probably more than 90% of the world's population is going to be extinguished. And you, you know, oh, you're such an idiot, Denlinger. Uh, okay, well then what about a guy like Elon Musk? the guy that's the head of the Tesla organization there, the Tesla company or whatever, and he's saying, we want to build spaceships as soon as we can and get and make a colony on Mars because the Earth is about ready to go into World War III and there's going to be no people saved. You see, I'm an idiot because I believe the King James Bible and because I preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. But a guy like Elon Musk that's a billionaire, multi-billionaire, well, people will worship him. He's a genius, you see. And yet we're saying the same thing. It's just our solutions are different. I'm saying mass extinction coming up due to war, due to the, due to the time of Jacob's trouble coming. Elon Musk, mass extinction coming up because of war. What are you going to do about it, Elon? I'm going to build a spaceship and get me out of here. What are you going to do about it, Brian? I'm going to wait for the Lord Jesus Christ to say, come up hither. Come on up. The creator of the universe. He told us what's going to happen. And now modern science, the cutting edge of science, the artificial intelligence and all the everything else that these guys are part of, and they're coming out and they're saying, it's a mass extinction event coming up. <laughs> it took you this long to figure it out? Could have just read a King James Bible, you'd had it. For the last 400 plus years, King James Bible said the same thing is coming. And you go back beyond that, the Greek New Testament's going back to the first century. We have extant copies, thousands of them, thousands and thousands of them. And the vast majority of them, over 99% of the extant Greek manuscripts that are out there, match the King James Bible. Not the NIV or the ESV or the New American Standard or any of the other Vatican versions. And they are Vatican versions. I'm not joking about that. They come from the Vaticanus manuscript. Another whole issue. You say, well, I, I, I'll have to think about this, Brian. I, I kind of am going to have to think about this. Um, the catching up when it happens... There's no, oh, wait, oh, hold on, okay, yeah, I want to go too. And the Lord says, oh, okay, I'm sorry, and you can come now too. No. When the Lord says, come up hither to his body, and the body of Christ comes up, 
the door slams shut. John, when he's in Revelation chapter 4, he looks up to heaven. From the island of Patmos, he looks up to heaven and he sees a door open. And he hears a voice that talks with him and it sounds like a trumpet. And it says, come up hither and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. Revelation chapter 4 verse 1. And immediately I was in the Spirit. No spaceship. No, I hope we got the wiring done right. I hope the fuel's not going to... We're not going to have a fuel line rupture and blow us up like the Challenger spaceship thing that they did years ago. You know, back in 1987, I think it was, whenever that thing happened. The astronauts went up and boom, blew up. Uh, no, none of that. My catching up is going to be supernatural. Not something I have to try and build. And I hope that we can get to Mars and I hope that we can make things work. And I hope that, you know, that stuff's nutty nonsense. There's no escape but through the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that you put everything else aside. Nothing else matters. Let me tell you that. There's not one thing on this earth that's more important than your salvation. You do not want to go into this time. And a lot of these post-tribbers right now are coming out and literally saying to people, it's good. You want to go into this time period. I want to go into it. I want to see these things. Why? Well, number one, because they don't really believe what they're saying. They're lying. They're con men. Um, and number two, there's, they're in it for the money. They really could care less. And, you know, if they're th saying, I don't believe it, but if it does happen, well, I'm going to be part of the enemy, you know, antichrist system anyhow, so who cares? That's the issue. Your job is not important. Your family is not important. Your relatives are not important. Your looks are not important. Your career, your car, your house, your vacation, your none of it matters. War is just about here. And it is going to be thermonuclear war and there's going to be massive casualties. People get all upset, you know, remember 9-11, remember 9-11, never forget, 3,000 people died. How about uh, when a third of people die? How about when war comes and the mass casualties start to roll in? You look at World War II, people just sit around the radio at night and listen to hear the names being read. Oh, we just had a battle over there. 10,000 of our soldiers were killed in a day. Oh, the next day, oh, we lost another 17,000. Let's read the names off. Families waiting at home and, and just looking out the lane and, oh no, here comes a vehicle. Oh no. Vehicle pulls up, gets out, military guy gets out and the family just, oh no. I'm sorry, your son was killed. What's it going to be in the time of Jacob's trouble? When peace is taken from the earth. But something that you're doing right now is more important than you getting your salvation figured out. There isn't anything more important than your salvation. Please, please, I beg of you, get saved today. Time is swiftly running out.